Welcome to the fourth video on Node.js and Socket.io for beginners. Um, in this this video, I wanted to kind of go over maybe some app-related type things. Um, kind of in this example, I was going to do an inventory type system, but imagine it being used for um, people entering and addresses, names, whatever it may be, and you want everybody to know what's going on. Um, I, I know this isn't maybe a real world as far as this is a very basic. Let's let's just put it that way. Um, what I've done is is I have a way you can enter names into the database, and I'm using a uh, MySQL. I'm using the WAMP database, um, and then another way you can get them. The the enter I did this in two different ways, so I could show you guys both ways. When you enter in the names, it's going to use AJAX to enter it in. When you pull the names, it's going to actually use SQL on Node. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. Show you where to get that from. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick, just to give you an example of what we're doing. I went, I went ahead and started the server, just so I wouldn't forget. Um, so let's say this person enters in a name, Joe, they enter it. It, of course, comes in, it, it, the, it passes right here and added Joe in there. Um, so it told, you know, Joe was out of the database, and then it tells them, hey, Joe was added successfully. It's the same way with here, if they come in and put Pete, enter the name, Pete added successfully, Pete was added to the database. Um, so let's say this person wants to get names. If they hit get names, it actually goes to the server and pulls the names and it puts it here. Now, of course, it's not going to put it here because this person's the one that looked for the names and you don't want it. This person's query is always affecting this. You just kind of want to know when you're entering names. So if this person's sitting here just add or adding names, this will pop up. I mean, I don't know what you might use it for, but it's more about the example. You guys can take with this and kind of build anything you want out of this. Um, so uh, let's look at you know I'm using just a basic the, the basic database I created just a um, uh, a node tut database I made a table called names and if we go to our browse you'll see the names are actually in there and I just used one field nothing special just to kind of give you an example so uh, to kind of give you an example how this is working um, we're gonna start back at our our app or our, let's start with our index um, and really I never delete I never change this but it doesn't matter so our the first thing we want to do of course is we're going to be the, the page is just showing the HTML which is our two um, basic buttons that we have um, so when we type in a name it goes enter name and it, it on click is submit query so it, it you know, calls that same function I just change what's inside the function so our submit our um, submit query function is starts off right here and it passes the form and then I go ahead and get the name from that value whatever it put in and it turns it into query name so that variable is whatever that person puts in here's where I start Ajax if you don't know Ajax um, there's I have other tutorials out there of teaching about Ajax but I will do a quick rundown through here but if there's anything you don't understand the important thing I want you to get out of this Ajax is you can literally copy and paste this and, and build your own queries out of it and make it real simple and what Ajax does is it basically is a is a way for JavaScript to hit the server, and you can and and you can run PHP pages that then can actually hit the database. So we're just creating a new a variable, and we're, I don't know how much this applies anymore. I I've actually got pages that I've taken this out of, and they work fine. Some of them doesn't. So leave this in, and it's basically just it's because of Internet Explorer and because of the different browsers, they each use their own type of um, request. So we put this in here to, to make sure we get the correct request. You don't have to really change anything there. Um, Ajax has different states that it, that it goes in, and that's how it calls um, it within each state, and that's how you know when when you can, for instance, whenever I um, whenever I put the change the this test down here, this text to what Ajax returned it's because the ready state was at 4. Ajax was at the state where it said, okay, I've contacted the server, it sent this back, I'm ready, and that's how I knew if ready state equals 4, then go ahead and whatever that response text was, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, this is the good, let's go ahead and this means when we're done. So let's skip down to that. Before that gets done, I just created a, a, a variable that does a query string. You could actually take this and attach it to back here, but it's just easier just to manipulate right here as well. Um, so basically we're opening the request and we're doing a get. You can do post methods here, by the way, um, more secure. We're going to add name.php, which is a, another file that I have, which I have up here. 
and I'm adding the query string and if you should know PHP and if you don't you might want to do some PHP tutorials because I'm not going to go through teaching all of PHP but I'm including connect.php which is just opening up the server uh, connection which all it's doing is a normal um, SQL connect uh, local host is my you know I'm using local host root is my username and my password is just blank otherwise it couldn't connect and I'm connecting to node tut the database node tut which I just showed you in my in here is my database so that's how I'm connecting um, otherwise if there's nothing there it's going to give that error no database selected which you will return which it will return because um, that'll echo out and if we go to our add name here let me just save this so I get rid of that if I go to my add name here it's going to echo out um, basically because we're adding that name it's going to do a git and get the name and I did the is set so you wouldn't get an error um, otherwise you're just going to get blank you could take that out and then it would actually error to the user but I just didn't want to do that so we're just putting whatever name gets tossed whatever name gets passed there from from our actual query name which is whatever text they put in then then it's going to get put into this um, variable name we're going to do a simple ins uh, query just insert into names into the person um, values the name and that's basically it and then it's just going to come down here and say echo that name added successfully if we come back that's when the radio state equals four whenever there's a return ajax knows it's ready and we're just going to change this this text dot enter, enter html to that ajax request dot response text which is going to be whatever's echoed so whether it's an error whatever's echoed that's what's going to return so that's what i want my inner that's what i want this text to say um, and then i'm going to do a socket dot emit inner name query name so if we go to our app and we do our enter name you'll see all I'm doing is enter name I'm passing the query name and then I'm gonna broadcast um, dot emit which means to everybody else but yourself that I added the name just like we went over before in, in pretty much the same thing I'm just doing socket on running another function to kinda of pass things to everyone so that's how we enter it so to actually query and this is client side let me let me just go over that this is client side um, querying the database. This is using Ajax. The next method is actually going to be using um, um, MySQL or, or basically a plugin for Node that will allow us to do it on the actual server. That that's more security. It's less um, passing back and forth because you're actually doing everything on the server. So another good instance is this is a perfect instance because we're passing several names back to the client here. If the only other, if we couldn't do it on the server, we'd have to have the user, the client, query it, grab all those names, throw it to the server. The server would then have to grab it, pass it back to everyone else. Because we're doing it on the server, it's only got to make that connection once. So get names from inventory, <coughs> and and the reason why I chose to do AJAX here mainly to show everybody what, how how to do AJAX, but um, the AJAX side of it, but also that nothing really needs to be passed to the server other than that name so it, it it could work a lot better than trying to pass everything here so anyway our get names is basically close to the same thing we got another button we're doing git, git query um, if we go to our our let me find my function git query we're gonna do socket dot emit git name um, so we go up here to our git name and on our git name is basically just a function like of course and here's where we're going to use this uh, MySQL plugin if you go to GitHub and you just type in this node slash MySQL you'll bring up this node slash MySQL and you can download it you can just go to the files and really you don't even need to download it all you gotta do is if you open up the readme that's on it just do this imp just do this right here let me let me close out my server and if you just actually go to your command prompt like we did before and I'll, let's go ahead and just do it real quick cmd and we do we browse to our to our actual directory where our tutorials at and then we paste that in there you'll notice it installs um, that's all you have to do you're ready to go um, now there is a lot of let me go over this real quick there is a lot of SQL plugins um, I don't want to say a lot but there's quite a few uh, SQL 
plugins out there for Node. The th if you're using Windows, if you're not, let's put it this way, if you're not using Linux, there's very few that actually work. This is one of them I found that does work. It's not completed, so it's still missing some, some, some stuff, but everything I've used it for so far, it's worked very well, and it's got documentation. needs a little work, but it's actually very good compared to most of the documentation I've, I've had to go through. Um, and it kind of gives you some examples of how to do things here. I'm not going to go over everything because you guys can kind of read. It, it's actually not too difficult whatsoever, but I, we will go over the actual pulling of it. But this is, to me, is the easiest one to use um, that I've found so far. So it's node-mysql. And um, I'll even put a link right to this um, in, in the actual um, on uh, Udemy. So now that we have this installed, now we can kind of take a look at what's going on here so we're just creating some variables just require the, the the MySQL you can actually take this out and put it here with this plus but this was this was the the default um, example that they give you so I wanted to stick with that so you guys would see it I changed my database course to node tut um, my test tables name names which is just the table and then we're just doing this client the, the root and blank password we're um, doing client.query use and then we're gonna we gotta make sure to to say what table what database we're using and then when we do our query now from this point on you're pretty much done from this point down is where you're gonna start adding queries and changing queries and doing your selects and your your inserts and stuff like that because if you notice here client.query select all from and then it's just test table what's up here and then we're going to select and just the results they have other options like you can get the results the rows things like that but all I need is the results um, now the results is going to give you objects. They're they're actually it's actually going to come back with objects that represent your your results. You don't want that because if you go to pass that through through JSON, it's going to um, it's going to just throw out objects. It's going to actually say object inside a bracket, so it's not going to know what to do. So what I did is I, I made a, a new variable called query string, made it blank. Um, I want to get the length. How many how many actual names were in come out through the results of that? So I'm getting the length of the array, and then I'm just doing a quick for loop, and I want to loop through all everything that's in that that query. Um, so query string equals query string plus results wherever we're at dot person plus, and that's just where I'm putting the comma. You guys can make this however you want. I just put commas after it. And if you actually wanted to like split them up to where they're individual names like stacked on top of each other, then just do a split. Do the query string dot split or explode, um, and ex you know split all the names out, and you can split it by the comma. That way, it shows each one of them. Um, and then we're going to emit give names. Now you notice we're doing just socket dot emit. We're only sending that back to the person who called for it. If you come in there and put socket.broadcast emit, it'd give it to everybody else but yourself. If we did io.sockets.emit, then it would send it to everybody. So if, if we wanted to uh, test that real quick, sockets.emit, and we save that, and we of course have to, well, restart our server. Okay, and then we want to grab our clients and we shouldn't actually we uh, we we're probably going to have to refresh them so let's refresh you're probably going to get that too i'm going to refresh the third time sometimes you'll if it doesn't see the same client it'll disconnect and you'll have to kind of hit it again so if we get names you notice it's going to pull both of them it's actually going to give it to both of them so that works so that's how you basically, um, that's how basically you pull the, the, you just query the database from it. So now, you know, everything opens up after this and all the games you want to create, the apps you want to make, this gives you a lot of area to room, a lot of, a lot of things you can really do with it. A couple other things I want to show you real quick is console.log and, and I am going to go over this in the next video. Um, but let's say we just wanted to, to send that to the console, um, or let's say we, this wasn't even running. You can actually do a, a console dot log and just put like, um, oops, just do a 
Uh, let's do, hey, this works. Because a lot of times in debugging, this is one of the easiest ways to debug. Because if something fails up here, or let's say that something fails before it gets the socket down on and this is never called, and it ends up never crashing your server, well, you don't know if it's even being called. So this is a good way to actually see if your server is being called. You will have to restart your server because you've cha made changes to the app. But if we refresh this, uh, you notice it's discarding transport because of the difference. If we get names, you'll notice um, our console.log actually, well, it, yeah, here it is. Hey, this works. So it actually, you know now that it's running through there. And that's a good way to actually do a little bit of debugging behind that is by by pushing that out if you can't figure out where it's working. There are de new other demugging methods that we're going to go over in the next video. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because this is a beginner video, but I do want to show a little bit of them.